what can we compost? Um, and pretty much we can compost anything and everything. If it's lived before, it can live again. So, you know, my, my Dr. Compost t-shirt, <laughs> uh, uh, that can be composted. My, um, my merino underpants, they can be composted. My merino socks, they can be composted. Um, but along with all our bones, our fish, eggshells, all these things can too. But what we've got here is we've got a little chart, um, really easy. And so here you can see that we split our, we split our um, ingredients into two sections, our nitrogen-rich materials and our carbon-rich materials. So carbon is usually called browns and nitrogen is usually greens. Um, but you can see there, there's some interesting things on this particular list. I'm not sure too many people have a lot of algae handy. Um, um, alfalfa is that we do have alfalfa hay, um, uh, animal manures. Manures we are going to stay away from are um, cat. I see a cat there. <laughs> We're not going to put any cat manures in here. Um, we're not going to put any dog manures in here either. Um, and then human manure is a whole nother topic, which we could leave for, for another time. If people, um, but that can be composted, but not in, we're, we're not relating to that in this particular workshop. Uh, and we need to hot compost that particularly to make sure uh, we get rid of any pathogens. But as you can see, if you look through the nitrogen rich ingredients, uh, we've got to have, you know, there's food scraps, coffee grounds are in there house plants, um, old flower bouquets, uh, human hair, animal hair, uh, the tea bags. We already mentioned watch out for the tea bags just with the plastic content. Uh, but you can see pretty much, you know, it's all compostable. And then we move over to, oh, one thing I also want to add though, I did mention human manure, but I also want to add uh, urine. Um, urine is I just want you to not underestimate how amazing human urine is uh, as, a, as a fertilizer. Even if it's, you're just peeing into a bucket and diluting that bucket and using it in your garden as a fertilizer, uh, we'll look at about 10 to one um, dilution, or we're pouring it into our compost heap when, we, when we've got all these other carbon materials as well. So really, you know, it's something that's, um, you know, there's books written just on the use of urine as a, and they, they, they reckon you could all, there's almost enough fertilizer in a family of four just from the urine they produce. But that's okay, and I don't want to go off too off on tangent. Um, um, we can look at our carbon rich ingredients. So lots of things there cardboard egg cartons, paper towels, uh, toilet paper rolls, um, cardboard, you know, lots of things that we've got on our household naturally, and then other things like hay, straw. Just watch out of hay with leaves uh, with, with weed seeds um, one thing it doesn't mention here is just be careful of anything that's gone to seed any weeds it does mention that actually weeds without seeds um, but as you see it's pretty self-explanatory we're going to these two columns um, and we can see what we're going to compost um, there's a few things we shouldn't compost and we shouldn't put in there so I, I, I'm all gung ho, chucking everything in. But um, so I mentioned earlier, glossy ink on cardboard and on magazines and new glossy, glossy ink on newspaper. Otherwise, most inks are, are vegetable based, so they're pretty easy to use. They're pretty fine. Um, we mentioned the weed seeds already and, and flowers. Weedy flowers will turn to seed very quickly as well. Um, any diseased plant material. So if you've got any plants that aren't looking healthy, um, any potatoes with a bit of scab on, a tomato plant doesn't look too well, uh, some, you know, don't chuck it into your compost heap unless you know you're going to make a really hot compost. And there's a, there is, we're not going to get too much into the difference of cold and hot, but unless you know you're going to make a heap all in one go today and get that above 55 degrees Celsius um, to kill all those pathogens, don't put any diseased um, plant material in there. You need to either bury it, you know, 50 centimeters down in the soil or put it into your green waste. Um, and the other thing is nothing that's been sprayed with herbicides. Um, there are a lot of herbicides now. Um, they leave a residue for many weeks afterwards. So say you're, you're, you're spraying the lawn um, with a herbicide. 
Um, that grass isn't suitable for composting and that, that herbicide will stay in your compost um, for over two years and it will really affect your plants when you come to um, planting, particularly things like tomatoes, you, you'll actually see them grow really funky and, and unhappily. Um, if you go to any green waste now, they will usually take all your grass clippings off to the side, not the local ones, but the big, more commercial units. They put all grass clippings off to the side because, you know, they can't, you know, it's hard to say, did you spray or you didn't spray? It doesn't matter, that's too big a risk. Because many, about eight, nine, or maybe 10 years ago now in the district, a lot of people bought compost from local, all around the country from municipal compost um, outfits. And they all had very scary growing seasons where all their tomatoes and beans did things they didn't want them to do. Uh, so in conclusion, a very short section, if it's lived before, it can live again. So anything that's organic, as long as it's not oil or plastic based, pretty much, or metal, we're not gonna chuck in there. So we could um, take some more questions. Okay, thanks for that. Um, can you put ash from a garden fire in? Yes, you can put ash from a garden fire and also from your house fire as well. Um, just, you know, I, I know it's common sense, but I'm going to say it anyway, particularly for, say, for a garden fire, make sure you're not burning any tantalised uh, green wood. Um, that, that those, um, uh, chemical, those nasty chemicals are still present uh, in the ash. Um, another thing you can do with so you can put it in there. The other thing you can do is store that ash in a bucket or um, in a container somewhere. And all through the growing, come next spring and next summer, all through the growing season, you can be putting that ash around your your um, your potatoes and your tomatoes and your eggplants. And you could be doing that every one to two weeks. A little nice little dusting, water it in. Um, it's nice, you know. It's, potassium and phosphorus in there, some minerals, um, and it's, and, and you can't overfeed it, you know, you, you can overfeed it, so you're not putting loads on it once, but just doing it every two couple of weeks, and um, it's not very stable in the soil, so it washes through, some of those nutrients are caught. Um, some of those, those black bits you see in there, you know, that haven't broken down, those charcoal bits, that, that's, that's some of that biochar I'm talking about, what I mentioned earlier. So you can crush that down with a, with a hammer, or a, a mallet and, and sprinkle that through, uh, sprinkle that through your compost heap and, you, and it's amazing in compost. You actually capture a lot of nutrients that would normally be gassed off. And I won't go off on a tangent. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great. Um, there's a question about dog poo, but I know you're going to cover that later. So I'll just skip that for now. Um, I've got a question about the urine. Um, can it be used individually without mixing with compost and how frequently can it be used for watering? Yeah, definitely. Look, you can use it very regularly. Um, mm -hmm. you what, in fact, a, strangely enough, aged urine um, moves from being acidic to alkaline. And so it actually becomes very beneficial. Um, you just need to, if you're going to store it, you need to, it needs to be in an airtight container sealed mm -hmm. off from oxygen. So you're not loot. It's not, it's not, you know, volatizing and losing some of those nutrients into the atmosphere. Um, and just look at, just look at diluting. You know, you, you're looking at, um, you know, minimum one to five, but one to 10, one part urine to 10 parts water in a watering can. If you're going to regular more often, then go a higher dilution. So, you know, look at 20 to one if you were going to do it. And, it, and it's particular, it's your heavy feeders that are going to want it. The plants, you know, it's not your lettuces, it's more your broccolis, your cabbages, your corn, your, um, your fruit trees. Um, your berry plants, um, you know, all of those will really benefit from, from that amazing nitrogen source. So no, you can't, you, you, you could overdo it if you were going to, if you were just going to use it neat, but by diluting it and, and, and focusing on, um, those heavy feeders. And I would be looking at, you know, not more than once a week. <laughs> <laughs>